Chaos surrounds IGP appointment. Utica resigns and obtains political asylum in Canada. NPP SJB worried by Lanza's crowds. What SJB told Patali. Namal and his men to opposition by April May. The leader, Deshita Magakiana, Prorti Belagasma. Chaos surrounds IGP appointment. Who would be the police chief? Has been a hot topic for a long time. That was because when CD Wickramaratne retired, many hopefuls were having legal and other hurdles against them. Deshabandu was appointed to the position on a temporary basis. On Monday, all eyes were on the Constitutional Council as to what decision it would take with regard to President Wickremesinghe's proposal to make him permanent in the position. Various campaigns were on to obtain majority support. The basis for those campaigns, mainly by Buddhist monks, was the Yukthia operation. Public Security Minister Tiran Alice was able to get approval for the proposal with the support of four members of the Constitutional Council and the decisive vote of the Speaker. Senior Deputy Inspector of Police Deshabandu was appointed the 36th Inspector General of Police. The President's Media Division said the appointment was made in compliance with the stipulations outlined in Articles 41c, 1 and 61e, b of the Constitution. Secretary to the President Saman Ekanayake presented the official appointment letter to Deshabandu yesterday afternoon at the Presidential Secretariat. Within hours of his appointment, opposition leader Sajith said the Constitutional Council did not approve Deshabandu's appointment. He charged the Constitution has now been blatantly violated for the second time. In a post on X, he said that during the meeting of the Constitutional Council, four members had voted in favour of Tenakun as the new IGP, two voted against it while the other two had abstained. He added that at least five votes are required for a decision, and that the Speaker has a casting vote only in the case of a tie. Two out of four is not a tie. Constitution is being blatantly violated for the second time. Shame on you, Speaker, Primadasa said. Earlier in the day, signature collections for the SJB-led no-faith motion against the Speaker began. At the time, the NPP, Supreme Lanka Coalition and other parties in the opposition had not extended their support to this no-confidence motion. Wirawansa's SLC had an executive committee meeting in the night and decided to give it support. Likewise, the NPP has taken a decision to back the no-faith motion. In the meantime, Buddhist monks have declared war against the petitions that challenged Deshabandu's appointment. They have come forward to be intervening petitioners in the seven cases filed in the Supreme Court. Their view is that the petitions are inappropriate at a time when the Yukthia operation led by him is achieving success against the underworld and drugs. The intervening petitioners are Kotapitiye Rahula, Akuretiya Nanda, Induragare Dhammaratana, Agalakada Sirisumana, Medagoda Abhayatisa, Bodhagama Chandima and Uduwe Damaloka Theras. At this rate, a very serious incident could happen before the presidential polls. It is better to prevent an illness rather than looking for a remedy. Udika resigns and obtains political asylum in Canada. Udika, the actor politician, has now tendered the resignation from his position as a member of parliament. Elected on the SLPP ticket as a member of Wirawansa's party, he caught public attention after he became independent following Aragalaya. He said politics has become repulsive for him. Later, it was claimed his vehicle was fired at. There were various interpretations, with some saying it was done by another MP and also that it was an attention-grabbing act. Everyone looks on open-mouthed as he rejected his seat, whereas there are do-or-die fights over a chance to enter Parliament. Reliable sources say he has planned everything and has already obtained political asylum in Canada for his entire family. If that is true, he is a real-life super-actor who had done justice to the script he himself had written. NPP SJB worried by Lanza's crowds. As the JVP gathered up retired military officers in meetings across the island, Sajith copied it to an extent that has made Fonseca to consider quitting the SJB. When the JVP rallied women, Jelani could not stand it. She got women from all across the country to meet in Kandy. 
but some wonder it really was an event to declare Sajith's fatherhood. However, TV news on Saturday night showed Sajith's meeting was outdone by Lanza's Hyde Park rally. Mainstream media as well as social media focused on the latter. Lanza transported participants by bus, and buses that arrived from Gampaha and Jaela were seen lined up by the roadside. Also, a considerable number of local government members who broke away from the SLPP and Buddhist monks were in attendance. Gotabaya's former private secretary Sugaswara is a main figure in Lanza's faction now. He is in charge of its operations in Colombo and played a key role in organising the rally. Many consider them to be Renil loyalists. There were posts in a social media group supporting him that said massive crowds attended even without Renil present. However, organisers were careful not to make a single reference to Ranil during their two rallies in Jaila and Hyde Park. That was quite intentional, according to sources at the Rajagiriya office of the New Alliance. The reason is they are yet to finalise a decision to support Ranil at the presidential polls. Anura Yappa has already declared that they would not even consider supporting him if he does not break away from the Rajapaksas first. All the above meetings drew crowds. But... Patali's party says showing crowds is no longer decisive in a presidential race. A social media post supportive of him says Lanza's rally attracted crowds and was full of emotional political speeches. But it did not produce anything new. So did the rallies by other parties. For the Lanza faction, they will soon have to have a head on their headless body. Or else it will generate nothing more than political fun, said that post. Does that mean Lanza's alliance should get Patali's head? What SJB told Patali. Political circles are paying attention as to what Patali's URF is up to. On the 14th, it launched a common minimum programme. There, Patali requested all parties, barring the SLPP, to initiate a dialogue on forming an extensive alliance. Other than the JVP, his invitation has been well received by others. Patali first met SLFP's My3 and then had a discussion with Ranil and his UNP. The third one was on an invitation by SJB's Maduma Bandara to meet at 11 Nomad AM on Monday morning. Sajith will not be present, but Atanayake, Mujibur, Kiriela and Gayantha will participate, he informed Patali. On the previous night, TV News carried a speech by Sajith, where he described Patali to be a bragger only. Was that planned? Anyway, Patali and some of his men were there for the meeting. Atanayake was a little late to come, but Kiriela was not there. The talks began with focus on the outcome from his talks with Ranil and the URF's programme and progressed on with elections. Atanayake agreed with Patali that a general election could be held first. The URF side noted that SJB and JVP will be on a close run at any election. The SJB will secure 35% of votes at a presidential election and will need an extensive alliance to find the balance votes required for a win, said Patali. Some in the SJB agreed with that, but Madhuma Bandara just ignored it. He said the campaigning has only just begun and that the SJB has the strength to surpass the JVP. Lakthilaka remarked that the SJB has so far failed to address the imagination of the Sinhala-educated class. So, a 2015-style alliance is needed once again, he said. But that did not go well with either Atana Yake or Maduma Bandara. The latter maintained the ability and organising to go for a win. In the end, Patali said the SJB's criticisms against the JVP are pointless, and so are its copying of what the JVP does. Mujibur found some truth in that, but Maduma Bandara was steadfast with his stand. As the team was returning after talks, a journalist told Patali that they had attended a wedding without a bride. That was a reference to Sajith. Patali replied that he would not involve any personal disputes in the way of matters pertaining to the country's future. But it is clear that the likes of Maduma Bandara have become infected with Sajith's overestimations. Dissenting voices should at least be respected. Before being a leader of the nation, Sajith has a lot to learn. The question is, if there is time remaining for that. Namal and his men to opposition by April-May. Monks loyal to Rajapaksas are now back on stage after their hiding for fear of Aragalaya. They are egging on with Namal to take up reins to take forward the vision of his father, Mahinda. Delivering a sermon, a monk from a temple in Pepiliana told him, Ranil is totally opposed to Mahinda Mahataya's vision. 
Prasanna's campaign to give him five years should be broken up. Don't be soft. Contest for the presidency. Buddhist clergy will stand with you. The leader has been saying that his loyalists exert pressure on Namal to contest as the SLPP candidate. First made at workshops at his Malalasekara Mawatha place, the requests are now being made in the open. The latest by social media outlets loyal to Rajapaksa says a unanimous decision has been taken at the Matale district meeting on the 25th to field him as the candidate. However, the district leader Janaka Bandara and his son Pramitha Bandara, the state defence minister, were not invited for the occasion. Namal supporters say that is because both want Ranil to be given five more years. In attendance were Namal, Kariyawasam, Kotegoda, Indika Anuruda, Tissa Kutiarachchi, Rohana Disanayake, and former local government members in Matale. Most expressed the view that Mahinda's image could be used to the SLPP's advantage at future elections. It seems the Rajapaksas are drawing away from the government and planning a journey of their own as an election nears. It is said that monks want Namal to sit in the opposition by April-May. Anyway, the general agreement is to defer a decision until Basil arrives in the country. Amid all these politics, Nanaka of Anuradhapura has now come out of her hiding and resumed her exorcism work. Certain politicians and top policemen have been lining up for about a month to obtain an appointment from her. It looks like yet another comedy is in the offing. The 2024 presidential election will be different from all of its predecessors. Things evident from the outside and what happens unseen point to that with the election yet to be announced. What will happen after it is announced is anyone's guess.